Hello everyone. Today I'm doing a video to use uh, PySpark, PySpark library of Python to uh, do k-mean clustering. So first I would like to give a short introduction about what is k-means clustering. So k-means can, uh, can be defined as an algorithm to separate a data set into various categories or clusters as they call it. So uh, we have an input of uh, endpoints uh, mentioned as x1, x2 and xn. So we uh, choose first choose uh, k uh, points, uh, k is the number of uh, cluster that we want to make out of the data set. So therefore it is named k means clustering. So then uh, the next step is we place random uh, points as we choose random points as centroids. So uh, then we calculate the distance between the centroid and each point and after calculating the distance we uh, divide the data set into clusters by by choosing the nearest centroid to the point and thus we get a cluster of k points which are uh, which are separated uh, by a division line so uh, this goes on until we reach a point when the centroids are no longer changing so uh, this is a infinite process so we need to we need to stop it by some way so we just use this uh, formula to uh, stop it we either uh, reduce the number of iterations we restrict the number of clusters or instances or dimensions so uh, to represent it pictorically uh, we will use this picture so here is a data set with uh, is simple data set in which we have considered two uh, centroids out of the data set and then we are calculating the distances of each point from the two uh, from the two centroids and uh, when we see the distance and you know, of each point from the centroid we can divide the data set into two parts the red part is closer to the red triangle centroid and the yellow part is closer to the yellow triangle centroid so thus uh, after this process we again calculate the centroid which which eventually comes uh, in the center of the whole uh, divided data set. So uh, after calculating centroid, we again calculate the distance and then if we divide the uh, data set again, we get a data set uh, which looks like this. The red part is a, again a new cluster and the yellow part is a new cluster. And then uh, the same process is repeated again and again and uh, new clusters, uh, new centroids are formed and uh, we get distances for each centroid from uh, each point. So after various repetitions we find that the center is no no longer moving from one place to another and we get a fixed set of variables a fixed set of data which is divided into two clusters so this is how uh, uh, k-means clustering works so first uh, we are going to do this uh, k-means clustering on uh, iris data set which is easily available online so let's uh, just have a look on the iris data set so the data sets consist of five columns. The first four columns are the sepal width, sepal length, petal width and petal length of a flower which is iris. So iris has like three categories uh, or we can say three species. The first one is setosa, the second one is versicolor and the third one is virginica. So these three categories have different um, Pattern of uh, iris length, uh, uh, sorry, uh, petal length, petal width, uh, leaf length, and leaf width. So uh, we will uh, we will be going to use the data to divide the data set into various species by using k-mean clustering. So once we have since we have a, had a look over the data set, now we will uh, go and look at the coding. So the code is written in uh, Python, and I'm using using Jupyter notebook. To run this code so the first step that we are going to do in the code is we are going to import all the all the libraries which are required for this program so the first important library is the k-means or k -min model library from the uh, machine learning library of the um, pi uh, spark so we are importing array from numpy square root from math and uh, spark context and spark configuration from PySpark so this all will be useful later in the program so the first thing that we are going to do after importing the libraries is uh, we are going to 
create a spark context so to create a spark context we just uh, run two lines of code that is configuration is equal to spark configuration dot set app name uh, key means and then the second line which is sc equal to spark context dot get or create configuration equal to configuration so this creates a spark context uh, which can be seen in the output of the uh, line 2 now next we want to import the data so first we import the csv file into a variable called data and then uh, we divide the data set into different columns uh, by splitting it into from comma so this will give us an array of uh, all the all the points in the in a single row so as you can see in the line 6 uh, we have just chosen five uh, top entries of the data set so we can see that there are five uh, columns which are divided into five elements of an array uh, the first four columns are the various length and widths and the last one is the category so we are using k-min cluster to divide the data set into categories so uh, basically we don't need the last entry so we are going just going to remove the last entry by uh, that we have done in the line 7 and in the line 7 as you can see uh, I have uh, created a new variable called parameters which consists of only the first four entries of the row, uh, each array in the para pass data so uh, as if you look at the parameters data we can see that uh, the only the four first four entries are uh, selected so uh, in the parse data we can see that uh, the data is in the form of string or uh, what other we say characters so we need to convert it into an integer or float value so if here the lengths are in decimal so we are going to convert it into float after converting it into float we are going to use it to uh, form cluster so the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, define a method which would create uh, which would uh, which would calculate the mean square distance from the centroid so for this uh, we are going to do we are we have defined a method called define error point uh, which would calculate the uh, mean square error from the center point so after this we are going to run uh, this uh, error point continuously for two two times so that we can get uh, the centroids which are quite stable uh, i mean the data set is small so running it again and again would not give us uh, various number of uh, centroids so we'll just uh, use this to, uh, two times so that we can get a broad aspect of how came in clustering works so this is how it works so thank you very much for watching the video my name is Vijay Shwakarma. thank you